Hello everybody, today we will be talking about this new chap this chapter on cells. Uh, the materials are actually obtained from Martian Cavendish Biology Matters. This is mainly for pure, uh, for students doing biology for O level and N level. I will be, along the way, I'll be telling, I'll be, I'll be letting you all know which are the areas that are not going to, that are not tested in N level or not tested in O level uh, combined science bio. Okay. For pure biology, uh, everything will be tested from this chapter, from whatever I'm actually uh, saying. So let's look at the, learn, uh, the learning objectives first. Uh. So for the learning objective, you are required to identify the different parts of the plant and animal cell. So in example, what will happen is they will actually give you a picture of a cell and then you are required to put in the names of the organelles. Okay, And of course, you will also be able to identify special membrane system, your Golgi apparatus, your ribosome, mitochondria, and the plasmic reticulum. But for the um, students taking science bio in O level and N level, um, the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus is not in your syllabus, so you can skip that part totally. And then, uh, so let's look at, and subsequently you also need to know the functions of the organelle and to compare an animal and plant cell. So this is the first part. Later on, you will also have other things to know. So for cells, right, cells are actually the basic building blocks of life. This definition don't really come out for examination, but this is something that you need to know. So imagine cells as Lego bricks where one cell is one Lego brick. Okay. So having one of these Lego brick, right, is basically the representation of one cell. But if you have many Lego bricks coming together, Then this will give you another structure of a uh, cell, and this together we usually call it a tissue. Then of course, the more complex the functions of the tissues are, you will actually form like your organs and an organism. So this is how uh, cells are generally uh, characterized. So how are you able to then study the cell? So you know when we are talking about cells, we need to be able to see it first. So that's where we use the instrument, the microscope. Now there is two main microscopes that are in your syllabus that you need to know. They are the light and electron microscope. Now, what is the difference between them? The light microscope uses light to visualize the cell, whereas the electron microscope uses the electrons to visualize the cell. And our eyes, we couldn't see electrons. That's why usually for an electron microscope, you'll need another detector or a computer to help to read the electrons to read and, and then to implant it into an image. Now, light, they are actually there's actually colors within light and that allows us to actually see cells with colors from the light microscope. Whereas the electron microscope is totally black and white only. But one main difference is that the electron microscope, you can see much more details as compared to the light microscope. So the images or the pictures formed from microscope is what we call micrographs. So think of it as the microscopes as cameras. And then usually, um, you whatever pictures that you take from camera, you take you call it photograph. Okay, so same thing for microscope. You you will actually obtain micrographs. Okay, so this is the one you need to know. Now there is two main views perspective of a uh, of any biological drawing or cell. They are your longitudinal section or and your transverse section. So the longitudinal section is basically you cutting along the long axis of the cell that allows you to see the full length of the cell. Whereas the transverse section is the 90 degrees uh, fakes of the, of the cutting and therefore it's, you can see it's actually a smaller width of it. So these two components, right, you will be tested more in the uh, practical portion in O level rather than a theory based. So what does a cell contain? It, uh, it mainly contains a lot of organelles. So the protoplasm is made up of three main organelles. They are your cell surface membrane, your cytoplasm, and your nucleus. So these three together is what we call the protoplasm. Uh, one common thing which in MCQ they like to put is protoplasm. There are a lot of students tend to forget, oh, what is it, what is it? Because 
uh, when you study, you tend to only focus on the specific details of the cell, but not the overall general view. So, um, so they tend to just make an assumption. So protoplasm contains these three things, which is the cell membrane, the uh, cytoplasm, and the nucleus. So in primary school, you learn that the cell membrane, the, the nucleus is like the brain of the cell. The cytoplasm is like the blood or the fluid of the cell. And of course, the cell surface membrane is like the skin of the cell. So together, they actually form a basic structure for an animal cell. So first of all, the cell membrane okay, is also known as the plasma membrane. By an exam, if you write cell membrane, it's still acceptable. Um, but one thing that they like to test in N-level is that what is its property? So for cell membrane, the main property is that it is partially permeable. Now, what is the meaning of the word permeable? So imagine you have a wall wall and you can't move through uh, you can't pass through the wall so basically the wall you would say it's actually impermeable however if you are like a ghost you can actually pass through the wall okay so what does that mean that means you are actually permeable okay the, the wall is permeable to you so same thing when we have partially permeable it means that they only restrict certain things moving in and out of the cell in this case so think of it as you have this wall okay where if you, you you cannot even actually pass through the wall, this is called impermeable or you not permeable. Okay, then of course if you have this particular wall and you can totally pass through hundred percent, uh, it is permeable or totally permeable. Uh. But if let's say you have a scenario whereby only some things can and can pass through because it is small enough to pass through this is what we call partially permeable and because of this property it is then able to control substance moving in and out of the cell so your cytoplasm is mainly just this fluid like um, space that's surrounding the cell um, generally most of your cell activity occurs here now why is it so because it contains a lot of organelles. So organelles, if you break down the word, it is actually the organs of the cell. So like the nucleus is the organ of uh, animal cell, the mitochondria is the org organ of the cell, etc. But you can't say a cell is an organ of a cell. So um, the meaning of organelles means part of the cell, the specific structure that makes up the cell. Then of course you have the nucleus. The nucleus is actually the is something like the brain of the cell, but of course the nucleus is also made up of many different things. The nucleus is made up of your nucleoplasm, it is made up of your chromatin, your nuclear envelope, and your nucleus. So in other words, right, your nucleoplasm is something like your cytoplasm of the cell. It mainly forms the fluid to contain the substance within the nucleus. The chromatin are like your DNA information, your DNA your RNA and uh, chromosomes that are with, found within the nucleus and it serves a purpose. The purpose is to actually store all your genetic material such that you have all this information that the cell can actually read to replicate or to repair itself, to take good care of itself. It's like a, it's like let's say it's a textbook that tells you in, a list of instruction of how you grow better or how to do things, okay? So uh, for cells that do not have the nucleus, what will happen is they do not have the chromosomes. And if they don't have the chromosomes, they don't have the genetic material, the cells will not be able to repair itself. And that's why, and this will then eventually lead to the cells to have very short lifespan. They tend to die out very fast. Then next you have the nuclear envelope that acts more of like a cell membrane. And the nuclear envelope is also partially permeable. Okay, uh, so usually what things actually move in and out of the cell, or the nuclear envelope would be um, like your mRNA, which you will actually study more in the later part of the uh, chapters. Okay, and then, uh, then of course the rest is uh, quite self-explanatory. So if you look at the nucleus in a three-dimensional view, it's like a golf ball. Uh, it looks like a golf ball where you have all these holes. So, this, so all these holes represent the pores of the nuclear envelope and that's where the DNA is, or mRNA is able to actually escape through the holes. Okay, so that's why it gives this property that it is actually partially permeable.
Okay, then of course you have your chromosomes, which actually control cells activities like cell division. So imagine cell division as the process for cells to replicate, for cells to produce another cell, okay, or cell reproduction. Uh, but in but for pure bio students in taking O level, uh, cell division is a chapter on its own, which you will learn in a subsequent uh, next few months or so. Uh, for combined science students taking O and N level, uh, cell division is not really tested for you. Uh, so you don't really have to know so much, but just imagine you, but you will still need to know the word cell division, which is a cell, you know, it's growing and repair. So it is made out of DNA and then the chromatin stretch will condense into chromosomes when cell is dividing. This is something that we will actually talk more and discuss more in the subsequent few more chapters. And of course you have the cell wall. The cell wall is mainly found in plants but not in uh, animal cells. So what this means is uh, this is one key characteristic that differentiate an animal cell from a plant cell. So and this cell wall is mainly made out of cellulose. Very key thing. This usually comes out in uh, MCQ for N-level students uh, taking science bio uh, in the MCQ. Okay, and what is the main function of the cell wall? It mainly protects the cell from injuries and gives it its regular shape. Now, do take note that this cell wall is actually fully permeable and not partially permeable like your cell membrane. Okay, so now another thing is a lot of students ask, uh, ask that, oh, okay, so how do I really identify? Is, it, is the line actually on the cell? Or is it on the which so so which is that line? So do take note. So let's say we take this as an example. Huh? The cell membrane is usually the first black line. And then the cell wall is the layer in between it. Or if you want, you can actually draw at the outer line, but I tend to actually put it at the in-between one. So just take note that the cell membrane is the one on the actual line, okay, in case you are required to draw. But most of the time, it's usually drawn for you. So one common O-level and N-level question that they that carries a good two to three mark when you ask for identification is something like this. Huh? Where they will actually give you a picture of a cell with all these labels missing. And then you are required to give the names. So uh, if you want to really test your, your memory skills, you can pause the video and try to identify what which points, which part leads to what point, okay? If not, you can uh, resume the video or continue the video and it'll be something like this. Okay, so for so what is then the difference? How is then O-level o pure bio students tested there? So for O-level pure bio students, uh, what will happen is you will not be given a very... 2D kind of drawn diagram like this. Instead, right, you will be given an electromicrograph, which is um, a, a more real life picture of how a cell looks like under the uh, electron microscope. And you are required to test, uh, required to state the, the, the structures. And then the follow up question will be the functions. Uh, for students taking science bio in the O and N level, generally they will give you a more simplified drawing and then uh, ask you to label parts of the animal or plant cell. Okay, most of the time they tend to ask for animal cell. Okay, next, uh, so for students taking science bio in the O level and N level, you can skip this portion on the endoplasmic reticulum. This segment is only required for students doing uh, pure biology in O level. So there are two types of ER, they are known as your end, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The part that differentiates these two things is, if you can see, is actually these black color spots. And these black color spots are what we call the ribosomes. So these ribosomes, right, are the ones that are actually located on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum, giving it its rough panties. Phase. But what is the purpose of this ribosome? It's for protein synthesis. So protein synthesis is the component that actually uh, is, uh, sorry, the ribosomes will then use whatever that is available to actually manufacture the protein. Uh, this one, you will also learn more at a later few chapter. This process is translation. Uh, and what material they use, they actually use your mRNA and of course your, your amino acid structures around it. 
Okay, so it's actually quite a complex component, but uh, not to worry so much of it here. Uh, so in exam, right, uh, you must be able to spell endoplasmic reticulum in full and to even annotate is it smooth or rough. Uh, and this is very clear in the picture. You could actually, you as long as within the electron mic, uh, micrograph, right, you see a very dark circle, right, and multiple dark circles around those areas, those are naturally your rough endoplasmic reticulum. So um, another thing to identify easily is the location. So your endoplasmic reticulum is allocated very near the nucleus of the cell. So if you are very confused as to where, which is the Golgi apparatus, which is this one, and also which is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, there are two ways to actually go about identifying it. Number one, if you can see your endoplasmic reticulum right they are actually all continuous see they are all stuck together in layer form however for your Golgi apparatus which is this segment over here they are all one layer by one layer by one layer on its own and in a way you can see this is something similar to an inverted wi-fi signal so your wi-fi is something like this the, the, the shape if you do not know what is this, you look at your handphone. If you are connected to the internet, it's the top right hand one of the icon. So if you invert this, ta -da, you get the shape of a Golgi apparatus. And this is usually located further away from the nucleus. So these are the two indicators that will actually help you to identify it. And another thing is the Golgi apparatus, right? It's actually very smooth. There isn't ribosomes actually allocated onto it. Okay, so these are some things to take note of um, and that ribosomes are required to make protein. So because of this structure, the rough endoplasmic reticulum doesn't just synthesize protein but, also, but mainly transports protein to the Golgi apparatus. So in exam, right, you need to also state that it transports proteins to the Golgi apparatus and not just say transport protein. Transport protein is just too generic. You have to, in your answering techniques, you would have to also include uh, at which portion. Next, we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is, it does not have any ribosome. And generally, what this means is that it doesn't do protein synthesis. So if it's not protein, it will actually synthesize your fats and steroids, and it's involved in detoxification. Detoxification is the process where you actually remove any form of toxin within your body. Okay, then this is just another clearer picture of how is this, how the three-dimensional structure of it, of the endoplasmic reticulum looks like. Next, we look at the Golgi apparatus. It mainly modifies substance made by your endoplasmic reticulum. In exam, all must be spelled in full. And not just it, doesn't just modify, it helps to package it. So when you create something, right, uh, it is still in a very raw form. You will still need to pack it up nicely into a very nice three-dimensional form for easier transportation. So that's the main purpose of the Golgi apparatus. So if you look at your cell, uh, your cells are all interconnected where your nucleus gives you the information of what are the uh, what are some of the things that you want to create. So let's say I want to create a product. I will go to the nucleus, read up all the information. And through this information, I will pass this information to my rough endoplasmic reticulum at number two. It has the protein, so your ribo it has the ribosome. So the ribosome will then read such information to then create a prototype or uh, to create a very simple product. So let's say it's product one. So after product one, maybe it makes the body of the of the of the product. Then you want to add coloring. Then it will then send into then it will send to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so uh, i think in this diagram there isn't a uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum but let's assume that there is so smooth er so the smooth er adds the color so you color you beauty you beautify it in that form then slowly this will be transported to the Golgi apparatus okay and within a Golgi apparatus is you can't sell uh uh, a toy just like this you need to pack it up nicely into a box and then uh, ship it to maybe a, a store to keep it so the Golgi apparatus helps to keep all of these things right into a box so you see the packaging over here 
and to do any last minute modifications to make it sellable. After the Goji apparatus, the items will then go out the cell through the vesicles so that it can be sell. So it's like transported. Do you see all this circular thing here? So these are your vesicles, which we will cover up in the next few slides. Okay, and then it will be sent out subsequently. So tada, this is the whole thing that I've just explained. Uh, it is, uh, you just read it, it is actually quite self-explanatory. Uh, I don't have to worry so much because this will be covering up in the next few chap in the subsequent last few chapters. Uh, but as of now, just you can pause the video, take a look at it. It's similar, a simplified way of saying it is like what I did just now. So if you're not, I can resume. Okay, so for students who are taking the science bio O and N level, this is where you may want to resume your lessons. Okay, so so this is where you start again because this portion always is tested. So what happened is in the mitochondria, the mitochondria will perform aerobic respiration. Now there's a difference between anaerobic and aerobic respiration, but this term you will cover in the next few chapters. What is aerobic respiration? That means it's a res it's respiration that requires oxygen. Okay, and uh, do take note, mitochondria is the plural form. Uh. Singular form, you would call it mitochondrion. So this is very crucial, especially for labeling, which you need to take note, which I can tell you honestly, uh, a lot of students tend to make mistake in because of spelling or they were not that careful. So what happens is the mitochondria would oxidize the food to release energy. So the proper word to use is mitochondria generally releases energy. It doesn't produce energy. Okay, producing is um it's not a good word to use for this for this segment. So if it ever asks you what is the function of it, just say that mitochondria they are involved in aerobic respiration and what it really does is oxidize food to actually release energy. Okay. Your chloroplast on the other hand, which is only present in uh plant cells, they are generally over. Now, do take note that there's two things. Uh. One is chloroplast, one is chlorophyll. Do take note that um, if they are asking you to label the structure of the organelle, right? please use this name. Organelle, it will be chloroplast. But if they are asking for chlorophyll, right? this is the pigment that is found within chloroplast. So do not use it, this chlorophyll as a structure. Chlorophyll is not the name of the organelle. Chlorophyll is the composition that makes up the chloroplast. So this is one uh, this is one example that I can think of. So imagine you have a cup. Okay. And inside this cup you have uh, water. So the water is like what we call chlorophyll. And the whole cup uh, is what we call the chloroplast. So do take note. So, so it's the chlorophyll within the chloroplast that is responsible for photosynthesis. And how do you then differentiate a uh, mitochondria from an organ, uh, from the organelle chloroplast? Uh, do take note that these are te telecoids, uh, which allows you to store all the different. Uh, this is actually a very good treatment of to differentiate a uh, chloroplast from a mitochondria. Uh, in what sense? Uh, do, so if you imagine you have a stack of coins, then you stack all the coins together, that is how the internal structure of a chloroplast looks like. But for a mitochondria, it's basically just flats, like just something like this. It's, uh, it's just flats all the way. It doesn't have like, multiple coins stacking together. So this is also very observable when you see a uh, electron microscope. So um, you'll be able to tell the difference one look. The next, of course, is the vacuum. The vacuum stores substance within the cell, and the animal cells have many vacuoles containing water and food substances. So, but one main difference is that the vacuum in a plant cell is larger as compared to the vacuum in the animal cell. And do note that in the vac, there's only one large vacuum in a plant cell, whereas in the animal cell there is a small and numerous vacuoles floating around. So this is generally the main differences uh, of animal and plant cell. Uh, do take note that we tend to use the word present and absent rather than saying uh, have cell wall, do not have. 
it, uh, you will have to be able to explain it in terms of using scientific terms. Secondly is how is the marking usually done? A lot of students thought that, uh, okay, one mark, if I give all this, this is one mark. Wrong, huh? Uh, the mark is given when you do the actual comparison of, let's say, the plant cell contains the cell wall, whereas an animal cell, uh, the, the cell wall is absent in an animal cell. So this one correct comparison gives you one mark. And second mark, third mark, fourth mark. Second thing is this this particular century old one, right? It's not one difference that is, uh, you can write it if it's an essay, but this is not the best difference that you can do. Usually, the better ones, right, is these two. Okay. These two are the best differences that you have to include in your structured questions for all of your exams. Okay, and usually the question will ask some, somewhere along this line. Okay, so now we are moving to the next part, which is specialized cells. Now, specialized cells, right, there is only three specialized cells in your syllabus, and they are your red blood cell, your xylem cells, and your root hair cells. These are the three things that you have to memorize. And memorize what? Memorize its structure, memorize the adaptation, and remember the function. This is a very good essay kind of question that can come out and it usually involves a lot of marks. If you are doing like short class tests, right, I'm very sure the teacher will also use this as a test. Ah. Okay, so do take note. Ah. And of course, being able to differentiate cell, tissue, organ, organ system. This question usually comes out in MCQ, uh, where they give you a picture and then through a table, you have to identify the different parts. Otherwise, they'll just give you a definition and give some examples. So, this is a definition that you need to memorize for your exams in O-level and N-level. So what is differentiation? It is the process in which a cell becomes specialized for a particular function. So when we say specialized, right, it means that it's so special that not another cell can actually easily replace its uh, job. Okay, so, so some cells, so imagine when you, when you just, when we all started with just one beginning cell, when the sperm fuses with the uh, with the ovum, then you have one normal cell. This cell is still undifferentiated, okay? meaning that it doesn't have a specialized role. Now, if you look at your cell in your, your body, right, you have cells that deals with muscle, you have cells that is for your heart, cells of your brain, all these are still specialized already. So that is how we actually, when we grow, we develop from one single cell, when we slowly develop, we realize that it's very hard to be a jack of all trades and a master of none, especially at the cellular level. So what happened is this process differentiation helps to allow cells to be specialized and then slowly through this differentiation, they come together to carry out a similar function through the division of labor. Okay, so the first, uh, the first specialized cell that we look at is called the red blood cell. The red blood cell contains hemoglobin. Same thing, the red blood cell is like uh, chloroplast and then the hemoglobin is just a pigment which is the chlorophyll. So hemoglobin in the cytoplasm of red blood cells helps to transport oxygen from the lungs. Uh. Now what is this actually transported as? This is transported as oxyhemoglobin. Okay, this is one word that you will come across quite uh, quite frequently and that the red blood cells do not have a nucleus or the nucleus is absent from a red blood cell. What this could impact is that it has a very short lifespan and it being having a very short lifespan um, generally they die off quite fast uh, okay uh, and, and that's because they again if you remember the nucleus stores all the information right so if you don't have the information for repair you don't have the information to grow you don't have the information to replicate you die you you, you tend to be destroyed quite fast and um and this is one thing that usually happen so usually uh, there are other organs or that will help to replicate this okay then of course it has the second structural function so if you can see uh, this is the first structure they need to know for red blood cell this is the second structure of a red blood cell where it is actually biconcave in shape now biconcave is actually two two main words are happening by means 
concave is means it is actually indented inside inwards. Okay, this is what they meant by concave. Uh. So if you have two sides concave, you will then have something like this. Okay, where these two things are concave. So what happens is this helps to increase the surface area to volume ratio. For what? To increase the rate of diffusion of oxygen into and out of the cell. Now, um, you try not to use things like to uh, improve the efficiency of uh, the diffusion of oxygen. Because efficiency can be a lot of things. It can be very accurate. That means, like, let's say you do 100 MCQ within one minute. You are efficient. But do you think that um, you are good if everything is wrong? Like, within one minute, you... you just anyhow put an alphabet and then you get uh, maybe zero, zero information. I mean, zero correct. So that is not very, so that even though it's efficient, but that's not the way it's done. So over here, what we are looking at is really doing it fast. Yes, that's why we say increase the rate of diffusion. Okay, next is the silent vessels. Uh, next is the silent vessels, which is the second specialized cell. So silent cell vessels are mainly made up of dead cells. Uh, so this is the first thing you need to know. Uh. So what is dead cells? Uh? Dead cells generally uh, means the cell, uh, they don't really have much protoplasm and things like this. Uh. So what happens is the silent vessels, they, are, they tend to be long hollow tubes and they do not have any cross wall. Now all these are important. Uh, by not having the cross, cross wall, right, it helps to reduce any form of resistance or obstruction for water flow. Okay, the meaning of lumen, right? The lumen is basically, let's say this is the xylem cell. The lumen is this particular shaded area, like the whole of the xylem uh, vessel. And along the way, the cells are actually thickened with lignin. So this is the second component. So first one is to say that it's dead cells. Second one is that there's a chemical lignin that helps to prevent it from collapsing. Okay, then of course you have your root hair cell, which is the third cell, specialized cell. So for the third one, what happens is they have this long and narrow protrusion, which is this thing over here. This long and narrow protrusion helps to increase the surface area to volume ratio for cells, for your root hair cells to actually absorb water and mineral salts. So this, what does this mean? It means it has to allow a faster adaptate, uh, a faster rate. So do you, do, you, do you see how they actually phrase the answer? Uh, this is something that usually in O-level you have to do, where usually you have a structure, you state your structure, and it must be supported by a function. Okay. So this is the structure, and this is the function. And these constitute one mark. Sometimes this can be called an adaptation. Okay. So in your answer, please try to phrase it in this way. So one correct structure for the correct adaptation gives you one mark. So next is how do cells actually work together to in a multicellular organism? They can actually do it this way, whereby one cell, they have multiple, uh, it's actually a group. Uh, they actually perform one specific function. But when you have multiple cells working together to perform a function, these cells here may not be doing the same thing. It can be doing different things, but together it is working for a bigger purpose, a bigger similar purpose, and that's a tissue, then so on and so forth. So we look at some examples. So tissues are mainly made up of only one type of cells, like your muscle tissues. Okay, so cells and tissues is quite straightforward. Uh, but then there are also another type of tissue which is complex. So when you look at complex, right, you have different uh, types of cells coming together to form a particular uh, function. So like let's say we look at blood. So blood, you have maybe your white blood cell. Then you have your red blood cell. Then you have your platelets, etc., your plasma. So all these together comes together to form blood, which is an example of a tissue. So you can see that is the function of white blood cells similar to red blood cells? No, they are 
doing two separate things, but overall what uh, they do collectively is to mainly uh, circulate nutrients around the body so and, and or to protect you. So that's where the blood itself is a complex tissue. Then you have organs. So if you have different tissues coming together, but performing a similar function, then you call it an organ. So like, let's say you look at the heart. Okay, the heart can have maybe some muscle tissues here. Then you also have some blood. You can also have another set of specialized muscle tissue here. So let's say muscle one tissue, this one muscle two. So you have different tissues coming together to form one organ called the heart. Then that is an example. Then of course you have multiple organs coming together. Oof, then you will form an organ system. So for this, so far we have been touching is mainly for humans. So for plants, uh, for the organs of the plants, uh, it's very straightforward. It's your leaf. Okay, your leaf or your flower. Pardon my drawing. Huh? So, uh, Yep, the leaf, and then of course you have your flower. So for flower, you have your petals, you have the stigma, all the different parts of the flower. They come together, they are the organ. For your leaf, you have maybe your xylem, your folium, you have other forms of structure, which we will actually learn all this terminology in the next few chapters. I do not want to confuse you. So for plant and human, they have the same thing. For organ system, for human, it's mainly like the stomach is one organ, small intestine is another organ. Liver is another organ. So all of them together, they actually form the digestive system. For respiratory system, it's mainly your lungs, maybe your maybe it involves your heart, etc. So all these will also make up the respiratory system. So there are many types of organ system for not just for humans, but also for plants. So for plants, it's mainly like a plant, you have your roots, you have the stem, you have the shoot, you have the leaf. All these con uh, coming together is actually like one organ, multiple organ system, and eventually it will form the organism. So in MCQ, how they usually ask you is, they will give you a picture of a plant, and then they will say, okay, is leaf an organ, or is leaf a tissue, or is leaf a cell? Then of course you have the roots, you have the stem, they will point it very, it's very clearly. Uh, so this is a typical MCQ question. For N level, they may ask you to give one or two examples. That's about all, it's a one, two marks thing. For combined science, uh, this usually also appear in MCQ, whereas the top few things that we have discussed usually comes out in structure or essay. Okay, so, um, so that is all I have for this chapter. Um, do take note that this is the video, these videos are generally done to help you to understand some the chapter better. It is not meant to replace your lessons or that you go to school for. Uh, it's, it's just for it's just for students who are interested to understand a little bit of what the chapter is talking about before the lesson is held in school or to do a summative uh, revision, a quick revision guide before examination or and things like this. Uh, I I I use this particular uh, publisher um, because this is the current, this is the only publisher in Singapore as of this time to actually. Uh, publish a bio textbook that is also used in school. So uh, you can use, so using these slides to help in your further understanding of textbook help uh, is good. Do not, just because you have this video, you skip school, or you just because of this video, you don't read your textbook. Your textbook is still very essential. And also your whatever your teacher says and the notes that they give you are also important. Okay, so that's all for today. Um, I will try to, so uh, please remember to like this video and to subscribe to my channel for future notification. Um, we will be, I'll be creating chapters mainly for bio. Then I'll move on to chemistry, then to physics. And slowly, I, if I have the time, I will move on to the other subjects that are being taught for O level and N level. Um, and of course, um, I'm also starting a channel uh, 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 some some more video to also do do a little bit of financial literacy. So if you're interested, you can also um watch those videos. So um so this is my so together we we just learn along the way. Okay, that's all. Okay, thank you.